Today I want to go over some body cam footage that I just received and watched. It is from the Moscow Police Department in Idaho. And this footage is a little disturbing based on what it reveals about a would-be criminal. In this body cam footage, we are going to see a neighbor of the 1122 King Road house the infamous house where the horrible slayings of four University of Idaho students happened on November 13th, 2022. So I'm filming this Thursday, December 22nd, and what I've seen, I've taken notes on, and I'm about to play for you the entire body cam footage, and you'll see what you think. I requested from Moscow police a lot of body cam footage related to the 1100 block of King Road, because sometimes that's the way incidents appear in the police log related to 1122 King Road. Well, today they sent me three videos. I have more to come of other incidents, but today I wanted to go over this with you. One you will see playing nearby is just the dash cam footage of the officer on March 2nd, 2022. There's not much conversation caught in that video, so I will let it play as I talk, but I'm going to play uninterrupted the next two videos, the officer's body cam videos. I was attempting to see what calls happen at 1122 King Road, but this incident that happened in March of 2022, right nearby the 1122 King Road house, and I won't give this person's exact address. I'm not going to give her name or anything like that, but I'm wondering, could it be related to what would happen just eight months later? I don't know exactly what day the victims moved into 1122 King Road. Zaina, Ethan, Maddie, and Kaylee. I do remember seeing Kaylee in a TikTok video exactly one year prior to the slayings. So that would have been November 13th, 2021. And it's a funny video where some guy is going behind others and making like a weird faces and stuff. And you can see Kaylee in that video and it looks like she's in the infamous house. I believe Kaylee lived there previously, perhaps with Maddie too. I'm not sure with Zaina. I know that the newer surviving roommates, I believe moved in a little bit more recently, perhaps the summer of 2022. Now that we know the details of this crime that happened only eight months prior to the murders, showing that 1122 King Road house in the background, the cops reveal what they say about an uptick in people stealing cars and prowling through cars. And what this victim says in the body cam footage it kind of paints a portrait of perhaps a local madman. Let me know what you think. And again, I don't know if it's related at all. I don't want to be one of those sleuths that's trying to conflate this with that. It just gives us more information about what occurred prior to leading up to this horrible, horrible crime in November. The call was for an unlawful entry. An unknown person entered this sorority girl's vehicle. It was sometime between, she wasn't sure, about 9 p.m., on March 1st, that was the last time she checked her vehicle that night. Sometime between 9 p.m. March 1st and 9.30 a.m. March 2nd. So what you're going to see are cops responding to that call. The girl had just driven home to King Road near the infamous house from Boise. She had arrived on March 1st at that house. She had arrived about 5 p.m. And so she went out later about 9 p.m. to get her TV out of her car. She had some pillows in there too. Everything was fine by 9 p.m. She is going to tell the officer, as you'll hear, she heard some weird voices coming from the direction of the 1122 King house. It creeped her out, and that's not the only thing that creeped her out. The officer said, yeah, it's kind of a bowl. We heard that like a fish bowl, and the way the noises perhaps echo. We heard that same sentiment during the September 1st, 2022 noise complaint body cam footage. I received that body cam footage as well, and I plan to put that in an upcoming video. But for now, let's watch this video where the girl is going to point in the direction of the 1122 King Road house, talk about how the voices that night freaked her out. She went back in her house. The next morning she came out and someone had rummaged through her car. Not only that, they had taken different items from her car, put them inside of her suitcase, zipped it up, and put the suitcase somewhere on the road. Her roommate found her suitcase. The odd part about it is this person, I'm assuming it's a man, what he did was not only take like different tickets or whatever she had, random things, put them in her suitcase, zip it up, 
leave it outside in the road somewhere. He was probably planning to steal her car because her fuse box, something was going on with that too. But she tells the officer she found her underwear still in her car somewhere shoved in a cup holder. Now that kind of made me go, whoa. Because if this person took the time to gather up all of her things, put them inside of her suitcase, leave her suitcase outside of the car, probably attempted to steal it, monkeying around with the uh, fuse box, and the cop is going to say maybe he was trying to hotwire it, but maybe the guy couldn't figure out how to hotwire this girl's car, so the car was still there. There was a footprint on the seat. You'll see a footprint on her front seat, on her driver's seat you'll see a footprint. But why would he take the time to gather whatever else she had, you know, her parking tickets or her parking pass or I don't know what stuff she had. He had enough time to gather all of that, put it into her suitcase. It's pretty brazen of this person to do this. Probably late at night, maybe in the middle of the night. They don't know what time. They didn't have a ring camera yet, but she ordered one that exact day. March 2nd, she said, I ordered one. So maybe she has some ring camera footage that maybe helped the November crime. Who knows? But why would a person take all that time to go through her stuff, put it in the suitcase, put the suitcase out on the road? That makes sense if he was attempting to steal her car and he didn't want any of her identifying items or anything perhaps with him. But why take the time? She made it sound like he took her underwear out of her suitcase and stuffed it in a cup holder as if he were going to take it with him. This makes me think if this person is related at all, and I know this is a leap, this is just conjecture and speculation. If this is the type of guy we're looking for with the 1122 King Roadhouse, could he be some kind of deviant? I know the victims showed no sign of SA, none of that type of assault at 1122 King Road, but what kind of a person not only attempts to, you know, invade someone's property, their car, like this girl's car, mess around with the fuse box in an attempt maybe to steal it or what else would be the reason? Harm her? I don't know. She did say she started her car, she put it in reverse, making sure her brakes still worked. But why specifically take out her underwear? Now that makes you think you're dealing with, I don't know what professional profilers would say, but that's kind of creepy. That's a thing that really creeped her out. You'll see, she'll tell the cop, I found my underwear shoved right there. And he's asking in the cup holder, her fuse box was messed with, you know, if it was a car theft gone wrong, why would he put all that other stuff in the suitcase and just leave her underwear. So this car would be thief. The prowler took everything else and put it in her suitcase, left it outside on the road sometime between 9 p.m. after she arrived back at Boise that day at 5 p.m. until 9.30 a.m. the next morning when she came out and she noticed her car had been rummaged through only because her roommate and their sorority girls, they talk about the sorority type of house it is. Ironically, the cops see her sorority on her pants. She was like, how'd you know that? How'd you know what's sorority I was in. And of course, they're cops. They're trained to notice everything, but they try and encourage her to have a cop talk. She said, yeah, I'll send this to our you know, sorority president. We can have another cop talk. I don't know what these cop talks are about. I've heard them mention it during different body cam footage. Maybe it's a way to help college students try and stay safe. But back then, eight months before the horrible tragedy, it's ironic to hear the cops talk about trying to stay safe. Always lock your doors, you know, get a ring camera. So the victim in this case ordered a ring camera the same day. They did mention there's a lack of cameras in that area. So I'm glad that girl ordered a camera that same day. And there was a footprint on her car seat. And she said, oops, I sat in it. I hope I didn't mess it up. And he, they were taking photos of it. So they sent me the photos of the footprint. And they said, well, you know, maybe if we catch this guy in the future, if he makes a confession, doubtful, but we'll be perhaps able to match up his shoe print. Now she did hear weird noises the night of the crime where her car was broken into coming from it seems like she points to the 1122 King Road direction saying it freaked her out but the cops kind of I won't say blew it off but they did know the acoustics of that area are different but they talked about there are more car thefts more break-ins and they called it a crime of opportunity it's a crowded campus you know it's a sorority house it appears it doesn't look like the same one we saw in that other publication the spokesman the spokesman were view. I was trying to match it up to see if it was that same house that we've seen the camera on, but that doesn't look like a ring camera necessarily. So again, 
My question is, if we're watching this, did a sicko graduate from being a car thief to stabbing? Are these unrelated at all? You know, if it were just, and it's still not a just, you shouldn't be breaking in anywhere, but if it were just a person attempting to steal a car or just break in and see what they could take, I'm thinking, oh, that person could be desperate. Maybe they're on substances. Maybe they're just trying to see what they can grab monetarily. But to take her underwear, that's kind of, mm, I don't know. And it makes me wonder about that whole area. And stay tuned because I have more. Moscow police says it's going to take a little bit longer. There's a different incident involving a bicycle, so I plan to see what that one reveals too. Especially everything that kind of happened in that area that necessitated a report in 2022. It kind of builds a story that might not be related, but in the end, maybe cops will see it was a singular person or a duo or whatever. Maybe there were a couple of folks or just one guy hanging out watching people. You know, to me, it's pretty bold to go in a person's car right there when they're right in the house sleeping and her going out at 9 p.m. getting her TV out of her car. I'm sure it was dark by then and just, you know, it was March and just hearing some voices over there that freaked her out. Was it some guy hanging out just watching and waiting and knowing when she got there and when it was okay to try and break into her car and rummage through her underwear? Weird. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Stay tuned because you'll see more in the future body cam footage like this coming up. It kind of builds a story and it lets us know and I hope it helps everyone know. You know, it can prick a person's memory. Maybe they can think, oh yeah, in March, I do remember some guy hanging out. And, and I'm not talking about fake memories. You know, I'm not talking about people trying to get in on the case and make up things as if they want to be in on the story. I mean, real people who remember in that area stuff that could have happened that could hopefully give cops the break they need to crack this case. I just want them to find this person so much because, oh my goodness, I can't imagine living in that area and the fear. So Genesis 21, one through three, the Lord graciously remembered and visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for her as he had promised. So Sarah conceived and gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age, at the appointed time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham named his son Isaac, laughter, the son to whom Sarah gave birth. So take a watch, leave your comments, let me know what you think about this incident and stay tuned for more.
Uh, yeah, she's right here. Awesome, thank you. Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Okay, so I, this morning, I just got Good. home from um, Boise yesterday. Kay. And this morning, I like walked upstairs and my suitcase was inside, but I remembered leaving it in my car. Copy. I was like, asked my roommate to just open the door. I was like, hey, did you bring my suitcase up? And she's like, yeah, I was in the middle of the road. And I was like... Hmm, that's weird. Oh, your suitcase was in the middle of the road? Yeah, it was like back over here, and I had it in the back of my car. Oh, so interesting. I was like, maybe I forgot and just left it out. And right. And I take it inside, and I open it, and all the stuff that I had... Oh, I locked it. I should have my keys. But all the stuff I had up here, all my pay stubs, the stuff I had in the center console, my sunglasses I was literally wearing yesterday were all shoved inside my suitcase, and like it was like zipped back up. And so everything that you had in your front seat was now in your suitcase? Yeah. Okay. And then there's like a shoe print over here, and then there's like my fuse box under my steering wheel is like opened. I'll go get my keys. So I, hmm. it. I just left it like Awesome. That. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to steal it. Why would you open the fuse box? Hot wire? I don't know. I don't know. That's odd. Because we've been having those vehicle thefts. Mm -hmm. Well, there's obviously no way we're, well, you wouldn't pull prints off this anyways. There's... Must be any cameras. No, this, there's no cameras here. You guys don't have a ring doorbell camera or anything like that? No, I or... just ordered one actually. Oh, really? That's smart. Yeah. I don't think any of our neighbors do either. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. But we have like a Facebook page, so I was going to ask on there and see. But like, are you here? Like, they didn't take anything. Like, I had this ring up there and they didn't even take it. But like, that little fuse box was like oh, yeah. opened. And then there was a. Is there any damage inside of it? No, not that I can tell. Like, I don't really know, but I'm just... Is that your shoe print? No. You have your phone on you? I sat on it though, so hopefully I didn't mess it up. Yeah, I mean, there's not much we can do with it, yeah. but it could. We've been having kind of an uptick in vehicle mm -hmm. prowls, okay. and say we find the suspect, mm -hmm. and they find his, say he's wearing something that matches that tread. Mm -hmm. It just kind of. Now, I mean, it'd be really hard to, unless the person admitted yeah. it and said, "Yep, I was there." I mean, mm -hmm. which is highly unlikely. But yeah. um, so, when did you get back from Boise? You said I got back last night at like. 5 p.m. Okay, so 5 p.m. And last night. I went, and you had, did you lock your car? No. Okay. But I came back out here about 9 because my TV was in here and um, my like pillows. Except that, I don't know, I, I like heard like someone like talking over there. It was really weird. And then I just grabbed it and went back to Yeah, because this is kind of a bowl right yeah. here. It's, I mean, people could be up in their backyards talking. Yeah. And it freaked me off. Though. So 9 o'clock is when you last saw your condition. Yeah. And your TV wasn't stolen? No, because I grabbed it and I brought it inside. And okay. I it was. The and only thing in here was my suitcase. Where was your suitcase originally at? Right here. So it was in, so it was in the back? It was like right here. And like this stuff was already in here. Okay. And they didn't touch it, but it was like right here. And so someone took everything from up there, put it in the suitcase, and then left it outside. Hmm. Yeah, that's definitely odd. It, it's odd because your fuse box is open. Yeah. However, I maybe... I'm not trying to like scare you or anything, but maybe they were trying to steal your car. That's what we were thinking. So, um, we have had... Leave me my stuff? Yeah. Like, oh, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. be nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, when your roommate came out here and found your suitcase in the road, was the, was the hatch opened up? I don't think so. I didn't ask her. Okay. I can't call her. She's inside. Or if the doors were open. I mean... Okay. Okay. And then... Did they say what time that was? Yeah. Hey, a few questions. Um, when you grabbed my suitcase, did you see, like, were any of the doors open, like the hatch or anything? No, just the suitcase was sitting outside of it. And what time was that? Um, I'd say around 9.30. Okay. Last night? This morning. This morning. Okay, so between 9 o'clock last night and 9.30 this morning. Yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Bye.
Is there any damage to your vehicle? Not that I can tell. What about, the what about the fuse box, the little lid for that? I don't know what it's like normally. The only thing I kind of know is like my hood thing. Like if you look down here, it looks like it's like bent like the other way a little bit. Okay. But I don't know. Okay. Yeah, they might have been... But the fuse box like lids on the ground. Did you look inside the hood to see if yeah, anything not, was tampered with? I don't know what cars are supposed to look like. So okay, I mean, it's okay. Do you want us to look and check? Yeah, you can look. You want to pop the hood there, Chris? I just saw it and it just looked yeah. like a lot of wires. Yeah. No, it sounds like to me someone might have been trying to maybe take your car, but... And I started my car already and it started, so... Nothing wrong with it? No. Did you drive it? No. Okay. I put it in reverse first so I can make sure the brakes will work. Right. And then it works. Okay. You know how to open your hood? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, that's it. Alright, so I ain't no mechanic, but obviously engine, <laughs> your batteries here. Everything two batteries. Normal, your alternators there. I don't see anything of notice. That's good. I don't know if there's supposed to be a cap here. It looks like your oil filter. Um, I don't know though. I have a Subaru too, but I've never looked in the motor. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so what we are, so we'll document everything. Um, like I said, there's kind of been like an uptick recently and like we've had a couple vehicles stolen. Um, we've had, uh, people's cars getting broken into of recommendation always is lock it. Yeah. So they're, they're crimes of opportunity. More often than not, sometimes, very rarely do they break windows and actually break in. More mm -hmm. often than not, they pull the four door, door handles until mm -hmm. they find one that's unlocked. Yep. Okay. So that's probably what they did. Hers was unlocked too, but she hasn't even looked at it. Well, if they're trying to, if they're trying to take your car, I mean, your car is oh, yeah. right here. Um, and because these cars don't look like they were messed with yeah, not on this at all, there's nothing's in a disarray. Yeah. Um, it, it just goes to show me, so, um, yeah, so, yeah, we'll document everything, I'll give you my card with the case number on it, um, yeah, like, like Chris said, so, I'm assuming you're a student, right, yeah. so, I mean, anywhere near the UI campus, it's just, it's a hot spot for people to burglarize crap, yeah. because there's lots of cars, there's a lot of people that aren't from the area, you know what I mean, so, um, it's a crime of opportunity big time. So, um, I would just tell all your roommates to make sure your doors and everything are locked and, uh, the ring doorbell, it's definitely going to yeah. help you guys out. So put it like right yeah, you probably put something right there. And other than the, they, I mean, they do sell the doorbells. I don't yeah. know what a doorbell is going to really do with I you know, so I much. But you can get the cameras. It yep. also, because like this little walkway goes right back to my room, so I'd like to see who's going back there. Yeah, for sure. So. Well, let me, uh, I'll give you my card with the case number. Did you take photographs of that? Yeah. Cool. So we took photographs of that. Um, we'll kind of... I didn't take photographs of the used box. Yeah, if you want to just... Um, you said it seemed bent a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's like the, the hood, the thing that opens the hood. Was there, was there a little, like a little yeah, lid on it before? Um, oh, it is there yeah, though? Okay. There. Did it, was, was it damaged? No. Okay. For the fuse box? Yeah. I put that back in. Oh, okay. there you go. Okay. So, it, yeah, it clicked back in. Yeah. Um, um, and the, I mean, obviously the uh, hood. Um, yeah. Moscow six. Freaky though. I don't know why they shoved everything in my suitcase. Can I get my case number? Honestly, I think you're right. I think if I took a, a wild guess, maybe they were trying to take your car and yeah, they were like... We don't need these clothes. Copy. The stuff they put in my suitcase was so random. There's no chance older. someone's playing a prank on you. Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't okay. see why anyone I know would ever do that. Yeah. But like... Oh yeah, then I found my underwear like shoved right there. In the, in the cup holder? Yeah, and I took it out. It was in there. And, I was like, That's really nice. and you said nothing is missing of, of your knowledge? Not that I can tell. Okay. No other... Oh, no, you're good. Like, what footprint are you on this side either? Yeah. Take one. We'll probably take, I know it's not much, but we could take one more picture of maybe the footprint next to a ruler.
I took it next to my flashlight. So okay. The flashlight. Perfect. Um, so this is my card. Okay. Um, if you happen to say, oh, my pink cell phone case is missing, yeah. you can just send me an email and just okay. say, hey, this is missing, this is how much it's worth, okay. and this is what it looks like. So um, okay. here's the case number here. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that That's this happened. It's definitely... It's just freaky. Yeah, no, it's definitely uh, eerie. Yeah. You know, knowing it's kind of like an invasion of personal privacy. Mm -hmm. Totally get it. It's happened to me before, yeah. and it's definitely not something fun to go through, mm -hmm. so... Um, yeah, okay. just tell your roommates, tell, tell people to keep their eye out, lock, lock okay. your guys' cars. I know we tend to forget it. I don't, I tend yeah, to forget yeah, to lock my car. Bad. People will think, oh, it's Moscow. It's, I mean, yeah, they know yeah, it's, it's safe, but there's always, yeah. I'm just glad do. I took my TV out. That would yeah. suck. Yep. You have any questions or anything? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Is this an alpha fee? Like, yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. Nice. How did you know? We, on your pants. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, we work on, well, we work on U of I. That's our mm -hmm. main yeah. main spot. Okay. So. Okay. Officers. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if, we haven't done a cop talk with you guys yet in a while. I don't know if you guys are wanting so. to do one. What is that? Oh, like at the house? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we should come. do one, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, Shoot me an email and yeah, let me know. We'll set it up. Cool. We come there. And I'll send it to our president. Perfect. We have them and uh, yep. I remember uh, Erin Gideas from OCRI comes okay. and... Uh, yeah, we just do a little talk, and it's good for, especially, you know, a lot of people have been here for a few years, mm -hmm. they've done them, but new people, it's good to just refresh yeah. and get some of that information out there and answer any questions and stuff, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun time, so we are there to answer whatever questions you guys may have, so. Cool. Well, thank you. Cool, All right. yeah. All right, cool. Take care. Thank yep. You. I had it in the back of my car. Oh, interesting. Like, I was like, maybe I forgot and just left it out. And right. And so I take it inside and I open it and all the stuff that I had, oh, I locked it. I should have this. But all the stuff I had up here, all my pay stubs, the stuff I had in the center console, my sunglasses I was literally wearing yesterday were in my suitcase. And like, it was like zipped back up. And so was, everything that you had in your front seat was now in your suitcase? Yeah. Okay. And then there's like a shoe print over here and then there's like... My fuse box under my steering wheel is like opened. I'll go get my keys. So I just left it like. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Yeah. Sorry. I'm gonna try and steal it. Why would you open the fuse box? Hot wire? I don't know. I don't know. Because we can have it in those vehicle tanks. Mm -hmm. Well, there's obviously no way we're. Well, you wouldn't pull prints off this anyways. Not seen any cameras. No. You guys don't have a ring doorbell camera or anything like no, that I around. Just one, oh, really? Smart. Yeah. I don't think any of our neighbors do. Either. Yeah, I'm not seeing any. But we have like a Facebook page, so I was gonna ask on there. But like over here, like we didn't speak anything. Like, I had this ring up there, and we didn't even speak it. But, like, that little fuse box is, oh, like, yeah. opened, and then there was a... Is there any damage inside of it? No, not that I can tell. So, I don't really know, but I'm just... Got your secret? No. You have your phone on you? Yeah. I sat on it, though, so hopefully I didn't, like, mess it up. Yeah, I mean, there's not much we can do with it, yeah. but it could... We've been having, kind of, an uptick in vehicle <laughs> prowls, okay, and okay. say we find the suspect. Mm -hmm. We find it. Yeah, you just learn something that matches that tread. Uh -huh. It just kind of, now, I mean, it'd be really hard to, unless the person, yeah. maybe like, yep, I was there, I mm -hmm. mean, which is highly unlikely, but, yeah. um, so when did you get back from Boise, you said? I got back last night at, like, 5 p.m. Okay, so 5 p.m. last night. I went, and you had, did you lock your car? No. Okay. But I came back out here about 
mine, because my TV was in here, and um, my, like, pillows, except that, I don't know, I, I, like, heard, like, someone, like, talking over there, it was really weird, and then I just grabbed it and went back to Yeah, it's kind of a bowl right yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, people could be up in their backyard still. Yeah. Me. It freaks me out, though. So, 9 o'clock is when you last saw your car in, like, a normal position. Yeah. And your TV wasn't stolen? No, because I grabbed it and I got it inside. Okay. The only thing in here is my suitcase. Where was your suitcase originally at? It was right here. So it was in, so it was in the back? It was like right here. And like this stuff was already in here. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely odd. It, it's odd because your TV box is open. However, I can maybe... I'm not trying to like scare you or anything, but maybe they're trying to steal your car. That's what we're so, um, we have had, yeah, like, oh, I'm going to be nice. Okay, um, so, you know, we made them out of here, but the two places in the road was the hatch opened up? I don't think so, I didn't ask it. Okay. I think all three, she's inside. Or if the doors were open, yeah. I mean. down here it looks like it's like bent like the other way a little bit okay but i don't know okay. yeah they might have been but the fuse box like lids on the ground did you look inside the hood to see yeah, if anything was tampered with i don't know what cars are supposed to look like so okay i mean it's okay do you want to select and check yeah you can look. you want to pop the hood there first i think you saw it and it like yeah. a lot of wires to me, so. So it sounds like to me someone might have been trying to Mind if I put this fuse box? Yeah, just cover it. back on And I started my car already, and it started. So nothing wrong with it. No. Did you drive it? No, but I put it in reverse for a second, make sure the brakes don't work. Right. I mean, it. it Notice. That's good. I don't know if there's supposed to be a cap here. It looks like an oil filter. Yeah. Um, I, don't I don't know though. I have a Subaru too, but I've never looked in the motor. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, so it looks normal. What we are. So we'll document everything. Um, like I said, it's kind of been like an active in here. We've had a couple vehicles stolen. Mm -hmm. um, we've had uh, people's cars getting broken into. My words of recommendation always is lock it. Yeah. So That's their their crimes of opportunity. More often than not, sometimes very rarely do they break windows and actually break in. More often than not, they pull door pull door door handles until they find one that's unlocked. Yep. Okay. So that's probably and what she they said did. Hers is unlocked too, but she well, if they're trying to if they're trying to take your car, um, your car is oh, yeah. right here. Um, yeah, that one was locked. Yeah. How's it going? Good, how are you? Oh, not too bad. Um, yeah, so yeah, we'll document everything. I'll give okay. you my card with the case number on it. Okay. Um, yeah. Other than the, they, they do sell the doorbell. I don't yeah. know what a doorbell is going to really do with I know, so I feel like you want to see it. Like, we can get there, the cameras. And yeah. also, because like, this little walkway goes right back to my room, so if I 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, let me, uh, I'll give you my card okay. with the case number. Did you take photographs of that? Yeah. Okay, you. Uh, yeah kinda, I didn't take photographs of the fuse box. Yeah, yeah. you want to do yeah. Um, you said it seemed bent a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it's like the hood, the thing that opens the hood. Was there, was there a little, like a little yeah, lid on, on the it ground. before? Oh, it is there, yeah, though? Yeah, okay. I just left it there. Did it, was it damaged? No. Talking for the fuse box? Yeah. I put that back in there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So, it, yeah, it clicked back in. Yeah. Um, and, um, and the, I mean, obviously the uh, hood, um, yeah. it opened, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I think you're right. I think if I took a, a wild guess, maybe they were trying to take it apart. Yeah. Is, the stuff they put in my suitcase was so random. And no so chance random. someone's playing a prank on you. Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't okay. see why anyone I know would ever do that. Yeah. But like, oh yeah, and then I found my underwear like shoved right there. Too. In the in the cup holder. Yeah, and I took it out, mm -hmm. but it was in there, and I was like, that's so weird. You said nothing's missing of, of your knowledge. Not that I can tell. And there's no other. <laughs> oh no, you're good. Like footprints or anything on this side either. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, we'll probably take, I know it's not much, but we could take one more picture and maybe the footprint next to a yeah. ruler. I, I took it next to my flashlight, so we can okay. measure the flashlight. Perfect. Um, so this is my card. Okay. Um, if you happen to say, oh, I'll, my I think cell phone case is missing, you can just send me an email and okay. say, hey, this is missing, this is how much it's worth, and this is what it looks like. So. Uh, here's the case number here. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that That's this happened. It's definitely... It's just freaky. Yeah, no, it's definitely uh, eerie. Yeah. You know, knowing it's kind of like an invasion of personal privacy. Mm -hmm. I totally get it. It's happened to me before. Yeah. It's definitely not something fun to go through. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah. Just tell your roommates, tell, tell people to keep their eye out. Lock, lock okay. your guys' cars. I know we tend to forget it. I don't... I tend oh, to yeah, forget I to lock my car. Yeah, people <laughs> think, oh, it's Moscow. It's, I mean... Yeah. It's, no, it's safe, but there's always, yeah. You I'm just never glad know. I took my TV out. That would have yeah. sucked. Yep. You have any questions or anything? Um, no, I don't think so. Right. Is this an Alpha Phi? Like yeah. A, all right. yeah. Nice. How did you know? Alpha Phi on your pants. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we work on, well, we work on U of I. That's our mm -hmm. main spot. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Main spot, okay. so. Yeah, we're with the campus officers. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we haven't done a cop talk with you guys yet in a while. I don't know if you guys are wanting so. to do one. And bring it up. That? Oh, like at the house? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we come, should do one. Yeah. Um, it, should be an email. Yeah, okay. and we'll set it up. Cool. We come there and I'll just, send it to our president. Perfect. We have them and uh, yeah. a member, uh, Erin Agidius from OCRI, comes okay. and. Uh, yeah, we just do a little talk, and it's good for, especially, you know, a lot of people have been here for a few years, mm -hmm. they've done them, but new people, it's good to just refresh yeah. and get some of that information out there, answer any questions and stuff, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fun time, so mm -hmm. we are there to answer whatever questions you guys may have, so. Cool. Well, thank you. Cool. All right. Yeah. All right. Have cool. a good rest of your day.